And as long as there are those that remember what was, there will always be those that are unable to accept what can be. Yep, we're all kinds of stubborn. I'm thankful. I will shred this universe down to its last atom. Never been much of a fan of the Avenger movies. Probably because I've never been much of a fan of the apocalyptic endgame final battle. But I have to tell you, as these things pile up more and more, and especially as I talk to people who I really respect, like today's guest, the outstanding alternative media journalist Richard Serrett, well, when people like Richard start heading in that direction, I do take notice. She said, COVID has opened a window for us and presents us with all of these opportunities, you know, to do the things that we should, you know, that, that we want to do in terms of this, again, this very radical, progressive, collectivist agenda. That doesn't get us all the way there. We get the radical, progressive, we get the collectivist. There's something more. I, I have a sense that there's something more, that there is something evil behind this. Yeah, there has to be a spiritual element. You're right. You're right. I guess in the in the fog of war, in the midst of battle, when I'm you know dealing with uh, the efficacy of masks and the latest study that comes out, or the latest peer-reviewed study on ivermectin, or a court challenge on uh, vaccine passports, or a woman who's pregnant and is getting fired because she, she refuses the vaccine, um, these little kind of the ground war. What what is behind this this thirst for control. Yeah, I mean, if you get down to the bedrock, ultimately it is, it's spiritual warfare we're dealing with here. I wonder, do you have any thoughts specifically about whether there has this been this huge swing of the occult and the satanic and the do what thou wilt culture, the Luciferian culture? Is the timing of that for you in any way connected, related, potentially linked to what we're seeing here? Or is that a stretch? No, I don't think it's a stretch. I, I think I think this is, we're getting down to near, you know, maybe the final chess moves. I don't know how far we are to the end of the game, you know, game over, but it feels to me like we're getting down to the final chess moves where these dark forces are having, you know, everything seems to be going their way. Stick around. You'll hear that I do come in off a ledge at the end. Here's my interview with Richard Serrett. Welcome to Skeptico, where we explore controversial science and spirituality with leading researchers, thinkers, and their critics. I'm your host, Alex Sikaris, and today I'm very excited to welcome Richard Serrett to Skeptico. Richard is, well, he's absolutely one of the top alternative media journalist that we have. And I he has really held that honor for quite some time. I don't want to kind of make him out to be or putting him out to pasture or anything because he's still doing absolutely terrific work. You might know him from his frequent guest appearances on Coast to Coast, where he's a guest host, or like me, you might be totally hooked to his excellent podcast, Conspiracy Unlimited. And yes, I have pilfered more than one or two guests from Richard's excellent lineup of interviews. If you live in Canada, you might be tuning into him on his syndicated radio show, which he was just telling me a minute ago that he just wrapped up. So I this, this is going to be a real treat for me. And I just mentioned to Richard, you know, whenever I hear him, I always feel there's a lot more to the story that he's holding back. He's a journalist. He lets his guests do the talking, unlike me sometimes. But I want to know what this guy thinks. I want to know what he thinks is the state of this alternative media explosion that we're in the middle of, but we're not quite sure to make what we're in the middle of. Richard, thank you so much for joining me and uh, welcome. Hey, Alex, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Well, it's uh, it's just the truth that what's that makes it easy when you're just telling the truth. But I give a very brief sketch of your bio. 
what sh uh, what else should people know? You've done uh, so much. You've done TV shows. You've done uh, media appearances on TV, multiple radio appearances. Uh, fill in the, the details for people of uh, of your work. My latest project is a an afternoon drive show on a, a radio station that serves the greater Toronto area. It's called Saga 960. And it, uh, it airs weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's quite a departure from anything I've done really since I was producing talk radio in the uh, early to mid 90s. It's more of a straight ahead uh, politics, opinion, newsmaker type show very fast paced and I offer my, my opinions. We, we talk about the culture war. We talk about COVID obviously. I mean, the lockdowns, the vaccine passports, vaccine mandates, this is really the, the issue of our lifetime. So, um, but I continue to do my Sunday night show, the syndicated program, the conspiracy show you mentioned, and that has about 40 affiliates across North America. My podcast, Conspiracy Unlimited. Um, I'm uh, I'm writing a newsletter. I publish a newsletter once a month called Inner Sanctum, and people can subscribe at strangeplanet.ca. So that, uh, combined with two teenage boys about to turn 15, uh, keeps me hopping. Yeah, I bet it does. You know, one of the things that I think is interesting about your uh, syndicated radio show, Saga 960, right? Saga 960? Oh, that's the uh, radio station. That one's not syndicated. That's just in the greater Toronto area. My syndicated show is Sunday nights, and that's the conspiracy show, and that's right. on Zoom radio. Yeah. Great, great. And you know what's kind of interesting to me? I mean, conspiracy has gone mainstream. And I think in so many ways, the topics that you're talking about, you're saying it's a straight ahead show. And yet I'm sure you're bringing a lot of this material that would normally be considered conspiratorial or not, not normally, but 10 years ago, certainly 20 years ago, it would have been very, very conspiratorial. That's so true. I mean, for me personally, uh, and I've, I never, I never considered it really alternative media because I've always been fortunate enough to do, I guess what you would call alternative information within a mainstream media setting. I've always worked at major market radio stations delivering this kind of content. The Conspiracy Show airs on a 50,000 watt AM station. It has the largest broadcast footprint of any station in North America. The, the station is primarily music oriented um, however, I have a, you know, kind of a, an island of talk on, on Sunday nights. And the, um, the show I'm doing now on Saga 960 is, for the most part, you know, it's, it's, a, much, it's a, a much smaller station, but it is considered mainstream, I suppose. I suppose. Uh, but what I'm bringing into it, I suppose, yeah, there's a bit of a convergence between what was considered alternative or conspiracy. And that is, I won't bore you with how that has become such a loaded term. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what's happening right now. We, we are seeing a convergence. Things I was talking about 20 years ago. And, and I'm not, I don't consider myself to be a conspiracy theorist. It's always been, you know, a case by case basis. Let's, you know, let's follow the rules of evidence. Some of these things are, are, you know, non-falsifiable. Um, and so ultimately, you know, there's no resolution. Other things, I think, based on the evidence, warrant further e examination, investigation. But I never, I never, you know, bought in holus bolus into the idea of the Illuminati or some secret society that is trying to rule the world like the Freemasons. I mean, for crying out loud, these people can't even organize a parade the free the masons anymore you know they're I, I never bought into the idea that they're trying to rule the planet um so i was always conflicted by much of it but my 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 role was to prov to provide a respectful platform for people to come on and and talk about you know their research 
See, I think you go, I think you go a lot deeper than that. I mean, that almost seems my take of it. Let, let me throw out another term that maybe will turn us, pivot us in a different direction. Okay. Conspiratainment. There, there's both, you know, a positive aspect to that and a, a negative aspect to that. I don't know what to make of it. You know, Joe Rogan is probably one of the most influential media people of our day. I mean, more viewers slash listeners than anyone on CNN or MSNBC or any of those things. Highly influential, has this conspiratorial edge, but at the same time when he gets on there with Alex Jones and Eddie Bravo, it's very conspiratainment, it's ha 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 flat earth, it's, you know, kind of covering all these things in a way that's tremendous to package it towards entertainment. It has to go that way as it goes mainstream. But you, you've you always come at it, from my, from my perspective, from a different angle. You've come at it with, who can I get on the show who has written a solid book or has a solid background bit of research and kind of tackling it straight ahead. So do you think that this conspiratainment flavor that we're we're adding to it might be one of those things that's designed to divide this community because certainly that's my view of uh, like flat earth for example and you can't do this stuff and not run into flat earthers and they come right. across as being super genuine like hey you haven't done the research it's real kind of thing i i, I just can't help i just tense up and I go, do you know how this looks to anyone, quote unquote, from the outside, any of the normies, if you will, they've immediately cut our group in half. And they've said, or, or at least put up a dividing line and say, there are actually wacky people out there who believe in flat earth. So we can take that whole group and just, that's one way we can divide them right there. Well, what do you think about it, any of that? There's some truth to that for sure. Um, but those that are trying to, you know, label somebody or discredit somebody by using that term, if it's not flat earth, they'll find something else, whether it's Bigfoot or whether it's UFOs, um, or, you know, the Illuminati, it doesn't, you know, pick your poison, but you're right. There is, a, there is, uh, a, a certain element to that. And, and have I fallen prey to that? Maybe I have. Maybe I have, maybe I have created some of that division and maybe that is, you know, part conspiracy entertainment. Um, well, what do you think if you have, how have you true confession? Where, where do you think you've gone with that? Well, I've had flat earthers on, I've had them on coast to coast. I've had them on my radio show, uh, my syndicated radio show. Uh, I tried to arrange, you know, for debates, but you can't, you can't do that, right? You, you're you not going to do that. You're, gonna, you're not going to accomplish that. You're not going to get someone to come on and debate a flat earther. It's, I mean, I've tried. I, I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible that there isn't someone out there willing to do that. And in many instances, you know, the uh, the people that call into the program sort of serve that purpose. And and I try to provide some, some, uh, some pushback. Um, See, I, I don't, I, I want to be clear. I, I don't think we should not talk to anyone or, or, you know, cancel culture verboten to talk about anything, anything. I think that's what this, that is at the core value of this alternative media kind of ethos, you know, but I, I guess where I think, you know, we, we have to kind of draw the line a little bit is just in terms of uh, having some standard by which we would, you know, understand or cast doubt or, you know, kind of resolve these things. And in a way that, that doesn't kind of, the, it's the relativism thing, you know, just because we're going to talk about flat earth, does it mean it's on the same level as another guy who's going to come on and talk about uh, a peer reviewed paper that was published in 2015 that shows that Fauci was bioengineer part of the team that was bioengineering, you know, COVID. And the guy says, and here's the research, here's where you can get it versus somebody who's just kind of has a idea about a, a theory of everything kind of level idea. Well, I, I think you're spot on there. I mean, I think 
not I'm not apologizing for my my program, but I think you know over the period of 20 years there there has been an evolution and and when I first got into this whole field and I I, I didn't really think much about UFOs. I didn't I'd never seen a UFO. I didn't think about Bigfoot. Uh, I was I was trying to build an audience. I was trying to find a, a niche that wasn't being serviced in the market. And I kind of fell into it. It kind of started dribs and drabs on my show and then it eventually took over. Um, and so I think it's evolved since then. But um, I think what I'm doing now is um, on Saga 960, I think is closer to what you're talking about, uh, where I'm where I'm bringing on, you know, people who who talk about peer reviewed studies when we're talking about COVID and uh, let's say the effectiveness of uh, um, early treatments like hydroxy or ivermectin, these types of things. I, I speak with I spoke with the 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 inventor of the mRNA vaccine, Dr. Robert Malone, Dr. Peter McCullough, all of these people. I mean, that's that's really what I'm I'm interested in right now, and I am somewhat conflicted by what I'm doing on Sunday nights in the midst of all of this stuff that's going on. Like, do I really want to spend two hours talking about, or an hour talking about a Bigfoot or, or UFOs? Not that that's not interesting and that people want to hear that, but, um, truthfully, please, I, please don't stop. Please don't stop. <laughs> well, that, and, you know, we, and, we do need a diversion. It's, you know. I don't um, think it's a diversion, though, Richard. I mean, like your work in the ET, UFO uh, kind of abduction thing. And I, I, it's, it's hard to know exactly where you come down on that. But like one thing I really appreciated, like one of your shows recently on Conspiracy Unlimited. It's a few episodes back. But it was like a the guys who wrote the book on the sons and daughters of Roswell. And uh, I, I thought it was a great reminder where these researchers, you know, we think Roswell, you know, they're, they're all dead. Well, most of them are dead, but there's sons and daughters who can tell you directly how they were threatened by threat of death mm -hmm. if they spoke of this. And we've heard those accounts before, but I think, like, here's what I think you bring into focus when you bring in the ET thing, because you have covered it so long. I see so many people that are falling for the A-tip, Lou Elzenato, not, you know, the doc, it wasn't, the documents weren't classified. This from a, this from a, a, a CIA spy who's trained to lie, you know, the whole thing seems fabricated. I even interviewed Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal, really respect and like both of them, but they're the ones who originally broke the story in the New right. York Times. Right. And it's like, how are you guys falling for this? Are you forgetting how they've lied to us for 60 years? And now they're trying to draw our attention to, oh, no, it's it's all right now on these videos we just discovered from a few years ago. I, I think we need a steady hand on the wheel there to remind us a little bit of this history. And I feel like when you cover this topic, you, you bring that just naturally to it. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's not important, but right now, especially what's happening here in Ontario with uh, vaccine passports and and um, we have a charter of rights and freedoms that, as Robin Williams used to quip regarding, uh, they had a line about the Magna Carta being written on an Etch-a-Sketch. I mean, we are, this is, it is so all-consuming now. I mean, this stuff literally keeps me up at night. As I say, I have 14-year-old boys. I'm, I mean, we are on a knife's edge up here. And so it is just, it, it, it takes all of my focus and all of my energy. Uh, I mean, I would, I would love to go back to the days when I could, I could talk about, I call it the stuff where nobody gets hurt. And now I know with, with the whole UFO ET issue there, I mean, there are layers there. And, and uh, when you talk about Roswell and people being threatened, obviously there is a lot of it, but there's a lot at stake here, but um, what we're, what I'm talking about now on Saga. See, but, but how is there not more at stake with ET than with COVID? ET trumps that uh, uh, 10 times over. How is it more important than the spirituality, you know, transhumanism, uh, 
Satanistic occult thing, do what thou wilt culture that you talk about all the time. If anything, they're complete. What I want to know is to what extent are they intertwined? Because if I try and understand COVID separately from any of that stuff, I'm lost. I'm lost because I got one guy saying this, one guy saying that. If I don't try and understand it inside of that context, I, I, I can't get there. Right. Well, um, maybe I'm more of a linear thinker. Uh, I right now what I'm feeling or what I'm what I'm facing or what we're facing here in Ontario, uh, the immediate threat is okay. So they're about to introduce or they did on uh, the 22nd a vaccine passport, which means okay for now you just can't get into a restaurant and a gym and a, a sporting event. Okay, big deal. We can manage. We don't need to go to restaurants. Uh, but the, the next step is introducing, you know, a digital form of that passport. Uh, what can they do on the back end to that, to connect to PayPal, to connect to your banking information? And I, 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 I see where this is going and it's happening at like warp speed. So I have to contend with that, you know, right now. And, you know, that's an interesting point. How does this intersect with the whole UFO ET issue? Uh, no, in particular, how does it intersect with the evil issue? I mean, you know, it's funny. I just had a, a just did a couple of interviews on uh, with a guy from Google who's very high up in Google and is well entrenched in the AI thing. And we talked about, you know, the demonetization and the control. Reluctantly, he, he kind of went there. Very nice of him to kind of address these things that you never hear about. And then I talked to a guy who's a, has a PhD in quantum computing. We talked about where is this AI stuff going? Where is the transhumanism going? And to me, the point of all that stuff is we don't really care what Google is doing. What we care about is, are they evil? Is what they're is what's behind that essentially satanic satanic evil crap? Because if it's just some guy who's just trying to do the right thing, that that's we can process that one way. But if it is like we suspect, truly, truly driven by some evil forces that are beyond this realm which I think the evidence is, is quite substantial. And I come at it differently than you do that evidence. But I think the evidence for the extended consciousness realm playing a role in our world here is just overwhelming. So that's what I want to know. Well, I, I have, I've always, you know, for, for me personally, and I don't always talk about it on the air, but people, I have enough that people I think understand. I've always put the UFO ET issue through my, my faith filter from a biblical perspective. And I, and I do see it as more of a, an interdimensional uh, angelic realm, you know, type of intervention that we're seeing here. Um, and I think, yeah, I think the same applies to the bigger picture, what we're, what we're, we're, we're seeing with, with COVID and, uh, you know, this attempt to control and, and coerce. And mask, and even to mask seems... Because the mask science to me in some way is kind of a an interesting window into this because at this point we have firmly established scientifically that masks just don't make any difference they work in the lab but over and over again and actually did studies on this like a hundred years ago and came up with the same you know uh, isn't same, it intriguing uh, though that they want everyone to wear a mask i just think that's i'm not into the i'm not super into the symbology stuff because i think it, it can get wacky but it does seem occulted in so many ways. And I know you've covered this many times. Well, in a more basic level, you're right. And it's, 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 let's, let's see if how far we can get them to comply. So we'll get them to wear one mask and then we can get them to wear two masks and then maybe we can get them to wear three masks. And then let's see if we can get their two-year-olds to wear masks uh, outside while they're alone on a swing. Uh, and then let's see how they react. Uh, you know, when we, we tell them that, they have to have a vaccine, otherwise they'll lose their job. And yeah, it's the in terms of the occult. Um, I, I I don't remember doing anything on that specifically. I may have. I'm sure there is, um, you know, a, uh, an occultic connection to that. Well, I mean, what what do you think that connection is in terms of masks specifically? You can take it at a lot of different levels where people have, but from a very uh, surface level, it's it's a hiding. 
it's it's a hiding of who I am. It's a deception. And I think that at its core, that is the satanic do what thou wilt ethos, you know. And again, I'm not a Christian, so I don't process it exactly the same way that you do. But at the end of the day, it's probably pretty close. I mean, there is a there seems to be this dark force, dark energy that keeps hitting us with the same themes over and over again. And some of those themes are just right there, are deception, control, uh, hidden, all those things that, and, and people who are more into the symbology, which I don't like to go there necessarily because it gets pretty wacky pretty soon. Mask fits perfectly with that in so many ways. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, there, there is definitely, uh, when you're talking about something hidden there is just a lack of transparency and I, and i guess the the root of a cult is cult i see um this denial we have something up here in ontario called the ontario science table it's supposed to be a volunteer group of physicians and health public health officials and so forth who are really uh this quasi unelected government that we have in ontario uh, you know, they they play the tune and the premier dances. I mean, he actually said out loud uh, it would be political suicide to go against them. I mean, that was supposed to be an inside thought, but he actually said it out loud. If I were to go against these unelected people uh, that have no accountability, we don't even know their names, most of us, you know, his career, his political career would be over. It's quite an admission, quite a stark thing to say out loud. Um but this, there is this cultish behavior. I mean, when you confront someone with, you mentioned masks, you know, 14 um, randomized um, controlled trials all show, you know, no efficacy. And what do they hold up in response? Uh, two hairdressers in Utah, that's their, that's their operational, uh, their cohort study, right? That's the one that they point to. Suddenly, that's the gold standard to two hairdressers in Utah that had 72 customers. And, uh, you know, so just pay attention to that one and not these, or, um, there was actually on, uh, on the news today, uh, former, the public health commissioner for Baltimore. She now works in the emergency room, a physician at George Washington university hospital. And she, again, she said out loud, uh, that, that I'm that because she's vaccinated, she has to be careful around her unvaccinated child. You know, admitting that this is where the spread is coming from. And you see all of these cracks now, uh, whether it's Israel, you know, what are they up to their th fourth jab? Uh, in another six months, if you don't have your fifth jab, you know, your green pass will expire. It's like this vaccine caste system that I predicted would happen. But when you, and when you talk about, you know, the vaccinated now are spreading it to the unvaccinated and there's no, there's no scientific epidemiological reason to segregate the vaccinated from the unvaccinated with these vaccine passports and you 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 show them the data and so forth you just get a glazed look and you get this avatar response you know like you're playing in, in a computer game you must get vaccinated yep but i just explained i just showed you the data it doesn't matter it's like you're playing against a brick wall to me that's that's a cult and you you know, we can't deprogram all of these people. There's not time. I mean, uh, it almost leads one to despair at this point where uh, it's like this zombie apocalypse. You know, I think things down here in the States are a, a little bit different. And I think, uh, although, you know, this is a worldwide thing, which is also curious to me. I mean, the extent to which the message was... <laughs> kind of simultaneously spread and implemented speaks to, you know, a, a power and a force behind this thing that that just we we couldn't have anticipated. But there's a there's a lot of pushback down here and some of the science is making its way through. You seem to be very in tune with the science. Do you think science has a chance here? Uh yeah, I I keep seeing as I say cracks in the dam and I don't know how many cracks it's going to take for the dam to burst. It should have burst a long time ago. Um, now, I know there's, you know, places like Florida and Tennessee and, and Texas in particular that are, that are, you know, resisting, pushing back. I think there is something like 24 states now that are 
opposed to these vaccine mandates and are going to sue the federal government. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I look at what's happening in Romania. Uh, we had 70,000 people gathering in the, in the city square and they had to shut down all of their vaccine centers because 70% of the people saying we're not taking it. I wish we had that, we had that fighting spirit up here in Canada. Um, we do not, sadly. And that also can lead to despair. I mean, I'm constantly, f- that's, that's the real monster under the bed right now, Alex. It's not a Bigfoot or uh, a gray alien for me. Um, it's despair. It's, it's, it, and it's also, I think what you're saying is very interesting. I hadn't considered that. It's your countrymen. It's the, your sense of uh, community and the sense that they're not with you. And, and I, I kind of get that. You know, I, I live down here in uh, San Diego, California, which everyone would think, you know, oh my God, you're in California, forget it. No, San Diego's kind of fought back and has kind of claimed their, their spot. I don't wear a mask. You don't have to wear a mask anywhere. The vaccine thing is just a complete non-issue down here. But I, I, my spirits are, are lifted by the fact that I feel like the people that I, I do see, at least, you know, a good percentage of them are kind of cluing in. And I, they're, they're, I get where you're, where you're coming from. If you feel like, you know, your neighbors don't really have your back, that'd be hard. Right. Uh, we could be days or weeks away from the federal government announcing you can't get on a plane or a train without a vaccine. Saskatchewan on September the 13th uh, just passed an emergency order where they can enter any property without a warrant. I mean, that's what's the next step is bursting into people's homes and vaccinating, holding them down and vaccinating them. Uh, so, you know, it's it's very different up here. Um, I may not be able to to get out in a couple of weeks. I mean, the the, uh, the the border with the United States is closed for Canadians traveling uh, by vehicle. So, you know, we could be trapped. Um, so again, yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the whole world of ufology and ETs and, and, and uh, the paranormal and all of that. It's just um, my, uh, my entire focus and energy now has just been consumed. With this, I feel almost like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fighting for my life, my kids' lives. My, it's, um, it's a heavy, it's heavy, it's a heavy uh, burden, you know, to be, a, to be a parent right now and wondering when my kids go to high school. Uh, we homeschooled them for about four years, but they wanted a high school, a genuine high school experience, so we sent them to an all boys Catholic school, and now they are sending mobile vaccine units to schools, and. Um, Minor, minor children are told you do not need parental consent to take the vaccine. So, you know, every day when we send them out the door, it's like, remember what we told you, you know, you, you don't take the vaccine. If they, if they start hounding you about it, you just, you leave and you come home. So that's our, that's our reality right now. Wow. I had no idea. And, and um, not that it matters, but isn't that against the law? For to, uh, yeah, you one would think we have a charter of rights and freedoms up here. I think it's section seven that deals with bodily autonomy, which is the most basic of all human rights. Um, except we have a, a proviso. It's uh, section one in the charter. I call it the weenie clause, and uh, basically it means that all of these uh, rights and freedoms that you have can be limited. There are reasonable limits to those. Um, Now, you know, we all remember Oliver Wendell Holmes, you know, your right to swing your fist ends at the tip of my nose. I get that, but that's not what they're talking about, especially when you place that power in the hands of activist judges, which we have up here. I mean, we have had, I mean, the Liberal Party here uh, uh, has been sort of the natural governing party for most of this country's history. And we have very uh, radical, progressive activist judges on the bench that have been po- appointed by consecutive liberal prime ministers. And they have taken that that clause or that section one uh, reasonable limits um, to 
ensure things like, you know, social justice and equality without ever defining those. So they can suspend your civil rights in the name of social justice or equality or diversity and all of these wokeisms that are not defined in law. Um, that's where we're at. So we have a number of charter uh, challenges before the courts right now on vaccine mandates. We had hotel quarantine uh, detention where if you were returning as Canadian citizen returning from overseas and um, you were uh, upon your return, you were forced into quarantine in a hotel at your expense. Uh, and uh, this is, this has since been abandoned because they realized that people were actually catching COVID in these hotels. And there was an incident where a woman um, was sexually uh, attacked uh, while in a quarantine. So that one, that one went away because the government made it go away. But all of these other charter challenges are being struck down. We're losing in the courts. We're losing our charter rights and freedoms. The court says, no, this is reasonable in, a, in the case of a, a health emergency. Show me the emergency. Are they stacking bodies like cordwood, you know, in temporary morgues like they did during the, you know, the Spanish, Spanish flu? I don't see it. Richard, what do you think is going on on a global level? You know, if, if you kind of take a step back, what do you think is in play here? What, what is the game? Well, I always come back to, um, was it Rahm Emanuel? And others have said this, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. Winston Churchill, I think, said the same thing. And I, not that COVID isn't real, not that, you know, we need to mitigate risk and protect the vulnerable and all of that. Um, but when you have something like this, it pre presents an opportunity. Um, you know, what else can we sort of piggyback on this crisis? In fact, our own deputy prime minister, uh, who was also was before the, the last election in parliament was dissolved, she was deputy prime minister and finance minister, Christia Freeland, and uh, a biographer of George Soros, by the way. And uh, again, said something out loud that should have been an inner, you know, an unexpressed thought. She said, COVID has opened a window for us and presents us with all of these opportunities you know, to do the things that we should, you know, that, that we want to do in terms of this, again, this very radical, progressive, collectivist agenda. Um, and now you hear them talking about how. Yeah, we yeah but that, that doesn't get us all the way there. We get the radical progressive, we get the collectivist. There's something more. I, I have a sense that there's something more, that there is something evil uh, behind this, because otherwise, how you know, how do you really add it up to you know destroy these economies to uh, d destroy the the mental health of just hundreds of thousands of people? Right. At yeah, some point, control. yeah, there has to be a spiritual element. You're right. You're right. Um, I guess I'm. I guess in the in the fog of war, in the midst of battle, when I'm you know dealing with. Uh, the efficacy of masks and the latest study that comes out or the latest peer reviewed study on ivermectin or a court challenge on uh, vaccine passports or a woman who's pregnant and is getting fired because she refuses the vaccine. Um, these little kind of the ground war, um, I guess I just haven't had an opportunity to look at more of the, the spiritual warfare aspect of this. But I, 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 I sense and I, I believe it's there for sure. Um, because one of the shifts that I think is, is happening right under our feet, and again, it's this kind of big picture alt media thing, and you've covered it quite extensively in different ways on your show, is the push for the satanic, whether it's, you know, sneakers from Converse or Nike with blood in them and pentagram and all that stuff that we've seen right. for a long time. And it's this do what thou wilt Netflix kind of culture. 
And then at, at the same time, there's a rise. There is undoubtedly a rise in the general spirituality, spiritual, but not religious. If we even want to go, that group is a fast growing group. And some of the stuff I've covered on my show with a very positive near death experience, kind of love and light and, you know, expansive part of consciousness. But the atheists have kind of left the left the scene. And I always wonder what's going on with that. You know, remember 10 years ago, that was the battle, you know, was the people who were more spiritually engaged were battling against these scientists, atheists. And now they seem to take an, a different seat at the table. Now it's just science kind of more in the vein of what you're talking about of uh, kind of social engineering, we'll tell you what to do, shut up, we're the experts kind of thing. And at the same time, the rise of the occult satanic, which is completely out of sync with that science vibe, but they've kind of packaged that in a way and sold it. And I know you're in the fog of war, but maybe I'll give you a little bit of a respite here, Richard, maybe it'll be a, a relief to think about something else. Because I think you 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 have a sense about this that maybe I have I haven't heard, and I'm wondering if anything pops to mind. Well, what what is behind this this thirst for control? Yeah, I mean, if you get down to the bedrock, ultimately it is it's spiritual warfare we're dealing with here. I mean, how else do you explain the behavior of you know uh, somebody who who genuinely believes? Uh, that 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 a person, a pregnant person, a pregnant woman rather, a uh, uh, a vulnerable person should be held down and vaccinated against their will, or should be, or should be ostracized from society. There are people, doctors now on on social media saying that the unvaccinated should be uh, excluded and sh and, sh and should not have access to health care. I mean, how else do you explain? that then i think the spirit of what's a very dark force that 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 has to be at play here for someone to actually think that about another human being uh i mean we're getting in i know i know people are very nervous about making the the equation of or the um the um comparison between nazi germany in the 1930s and and what's happening now uh because we can't diminish you know the Holocaust, we can't diminish apartheid, we can't diminish uh, slavery and all of these things. But I, th I, I think the, uh, I think the signs are there. I mean, I, I've talked to people who survived the Holocaust, went to concentration camps. They're in their eighties and nineties. Uh, and they're nervous. They see the signs. And obviously there is a, you know, I think the same forces at play in all of these things, whether we're talking about genocide or apartheid or uh, slavery, denying someone just basic human dignity and their human rights. So yeah, there, there has to be an element of spiritual warfare. I mean, that, that underpins everything, right? To, for me, absolutely. Uh, so I agreed. And, you know, how can it be otherwise, right? I mean, we, like I always say, what what's left out of the equation so many times in our culture is that we are all we are all leading rich spiritual lives. That's a given. That's a given. No matter who you are, you're reading. You, that is the ultimate result of understanding that you are not a biological robot in a meaningless universe. Is that you're this rich spiritual being? Right. We're not meat robots. That's right. <laughs> we're leading. So we're all in that game. I wonder. Do you have any thoughts specifically about whether there has this been this huge swing? of the occult and the satanic and the do what thou wilt culture, the Luciferian culture. Is the timing of that for you in any way connected, related, potentially linked to what we're seeing here? Or is it just, you know, I mean, these things happen and they don't always sync up for any big picture reason, but do you see no. anything there or is that a stretch? No, I don't think it's a stretch. I, I think, I think this is, we're getting down to near, you know, maybe the final chess moves. I don't know how far we are to the end of the game, you know, game over, but it feels to me like we're getting down to the final chess moves where these dark forces are having, you know, everything seems to be going their way. 
Um, and um, if the end game is absolute total control and enslavement, and I don't know if I'm ready yet to make the connection between the, I don't know enough about the mRNA vaccine to say that this is part of the, you know, connects to the transhumanist movement to make us less human, to make us less spiritual. Uh, I don't know. Um, it could be. How do you feel about that? Do you think the mRNA vaccine is designed to, I don't know, dehumanize? I think transhumanism gets too much play in the, in the same way that we're talking about this extended spirituality. I think darkness gets too much play. It's all about the light. The light shines so bright and so much brighter than any of the darkness that I, I think it's easy to get caught up in the ebbs and flows of the of the light and the darkness. But to me, um, no, they, they, you know, I was reading, a, somebody passed along a quote from uh, Gandhi the other day. And he said, good always wins. He says, think of history, good always wins out, you know? And I think the fact that we're here is an affirmation of that. So yeah, I don't, I don't really, uh, in the same way that I don't think their game is as tight as it looks in terms of this uh, biohack that they've done. And now it's kind of spreading in a million different ways that they didn't predict. And it's creating a real headache for their science because their science absolutely makes no sense in terms of booster, in terms of immunization for people who have, uh, or natural immunization for people who've had COVID. All of that's crumbling at the same time that I think there is an internal strength in people that is waking up. So I don't know. I take a, maybe I'm. No, maybe I'm I, a, I have to be, you know, in the midst of all this, I do. I have to be reminded. You're right. The good guys win. That's how the movie ends ultimately. Yes. Uh, but we have to, we have to endure and, you know, live through this, uh, which, you know, it does, it takes a tremendous amount of, uh, of faith and inner strength, you know, to stand up to that. But we do, we have to, you have to finish the race. You have to fight. I think it was Jordan Peterson and saying the other day how actually uh, evil is not dark. Darkness is easy to look into. It's the light is, you can't stare at the light. Um, because the problem with- All you can do is step into it. Yeah. But if you stare at the light, if you, if you stare at evil, then you are, you are compelled to, to admit that it's real and to do something about it. That's why evil is difficult to look at. So here we are, we're looking, we're staring, you know, at evil. Now what? Now we, we are compelled, we have to fight. And this wow. is where I'm right now. I have to fight. Richard Serrett, that might be an awesome, awesome way to wrap this up. This might not be quite the inspiration to folks who are uh, <laughs> who are not undergoing what you're going because I, I have to admit, I, I just really like all of us down here, you know, we don't quite stay as focused on what's going on. But it's a good eye opener. You know, if it's a canary in the coal mine kind of thing, then give it to me both barrels. And you certainly did it. What a what a battle you're going through. So I, I hope people do stay in touch with your excellent work. Now, the, the the radio show that you do that's syndicated, people can listen to it through the website? Uh, yes, it's uh, The Conspiracy Show, Sunday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern. And you can, uh, if you're not in the listening area, and it's a huge listening area, uh, you can listen on AM 740 all across Ontario, parts of Quebec, Manitoba, Maine to Minnesota, south to the Carolinas. But, uh, you know, at night with a little help from atmospheric skip, you can pull it in on the radio. If you're outside that huge area, you can stream it live at zoomerradio.ca, zoomerradio.ca. And then, of course, there's uh, Conspiracy Unlimited, which is free and if you want to and i certainly do you know you can get the premium thing for just like two dollars a month it's like the greatest value out there some absolutely terrific shows there as well and 
That you can get everywhere, but the conspiracyunlimitedpodcast.com is the place to go, right? You got it. And uh, I'm not sure when this is airing, but I'll be doing Coast to Coast uh, Saturday, September the 25th. Um, Pacific, that would be 10 p.m. Pacific or uh, 1 a.m. Sunday morning, Sunday, September the 26th. How do you feel when those dates are coming up? Do you kind of have mixed feelings of that 1 a.m. <laughs> thing? I just, I, I, I'm like a shark, I guess. I have to keep moving, otherwise I'll sink and drown. I just keep moving. Oh, awesome. Well, it, it's been terrific uh, having you on and, and just love your work and so respect what you're doing. And thank you for, for joining me, Richard. My pleasure, Alex. Thank you for having me. Thanks again to Richard Serrett for joining me today on Skeptico. The obvious question from this one is, is the chess game coming down to its final moves? What do you think? Join me over on the Skeptico forum or find me any way you will. Lots more to come. Stay with me for all of that. Until next time, take care and bye for now.